Hello friends, welcome to this new series. In this very first video, we are going to explore the branch of physics named electrostatics. While reading any textbook, we have to accustomed with the concept of charge. And this video is purely based on the idea what is charge. Simply to say in brief that charge is one of the fundamental property of any massive particle. Just like our name is an identification property of ourselves. So let us explore this elementary property with historical background. And I think it is one of the efficient way to understand how non-intuitive ideas and experimental methods have enriched this field. Not only this field, every field progresses in such way. In 600 BC, Greek philosopher Thales discovered that a piece of fur rubbed by amber attracts small paper pieces. It was also noticed that an ore of iron named magnetite, whose chemical formula is Fe3O4, iron oxide, attracts small pieces of iron. Magnetite has several interesting properties. It not only attracts iron, it becomes fixed into north-south direction when freely hanged by thread. In those days, to make fun in parties, women used to rub their amber jewelry and touched frogs with their jewelry. Frogs jumped out desperately. The cause behind this phenomena was totally unknown to them. Then, in early 17th century, William Gilbert, the physician of Queen Elizabeth, repeated Thales' experiment with several other objects like cat's fur, silk, glass, etc. and found the same property like rubbed amber. Fur is thick growth of hair that covers the skin of many animals. William Gilbert also coined the term electricity. Though these experiments look interesting and non-intuitive one, it didn't attract much attention until the beginning of 18th century. After that, thorough progress was made by Benjamin Franklin. He has been pointed out as the father figure of this branch. He first introduced the notion of electronic charge by suggesting a new concept of electric fire. He told that when we rub two object, electric fire transfers from one object to another. Who gains electric fire, we can call it as A. Who loses it, we can call it that object B. And it is pure convention that A is supposed to be positively charged and B is negatively charged. No mystery is hidden here. It is also seen that A attracts B, but A repulses A and B repulses B after rubbing A and B. This phenomena directly concludes that if two objects have same property that is gain of electric fire or lose of it, they repulse each other. And if they possess opposite property, then only attract, a very different picture from the laws of gravity. There is only attraction. Before going into the details of electric fire and its consequences, we take a glance into our daily life experiences. Without taking any electronic gadget, we can feel the essence of Franklin's experiment. When we put off woolen garments, it strongly attracts our hair. Another example is if we comb our dry hair with plastic brush, few times and hold the brush nearby some tiny paper pieces, they are attracted to the brush. This is a famous experiment and written in every textbook. Besides this, another experiment can be performed. Take an ebonite stick, rub it with fur and then hold it near a flow of water. And it will be seen that the flow of water will bend towards the stick. Now at last but not least, see a natural phenomena that is thundering and lightning. Thundering is caused by huge amount of charge in cloud relatively near to the ground. And lightning rod are seen to be attached in the tall buildings for protection from thundering. 
and the idea of lightning rod was also invented by Franklin. Just think how amazing his thoughts are. Actually, we live due to the flow of charge in our body. While performing these experiments mentioned in the previous slide, you will discover that they are easy to say but hard to do except winter. Without tearing your hair by rubbing with brush, nothing will happen. So what's wrong in these experiments? Let us think deeply and we will end up with a bunch of questions. Number one, what makes winter so particular for these experiments? Number two, does the brush attract paper pieces before combing hair? And we know its answer, it is absolutely not. So, why does brush attract paper pieces without rubbing one another? Isn't it violating Franklin's idea of transfer of electric fire? Same is true for the flow of water also. Another question can be seen as, how do you fix the type of charge into attracting objects? Let us look an example. We take a piece of glass rod and silk and rub one another. Now, which will possess positive charge and which one will negative charge, how to decide? There may be various other questions like these. Another question can be in thundering, there are lot of sparks. But in these experiments, no such severe things happen. Why? Is the strength of attraction is same for all objects, etc, etc. There can be many others. To answer such difficult questions, we again have to return in the progress of this field. The discovery of atomic structure by Rutherford and many other eminent physicists have confirmed that all the materials are formed with atom. An atom with three fundamental components. They are proton, neutron and electron. Every bulk property including these two must be explained with this basic structure of material. So we have to explore electronic theory of electrification. According to this theory static electricity which actually happens when we rub two objects is the result of an imbalance of charge in materials. Since all materials are made up of three fundamental particles Positive and negative charge must be carried out by them. Several experiments reveal that an atom encapsulates positively charged protons, neutral neutrons and negatively charged electrons within it. Positive and neutral charges make up the core nucleus while the negatively charged electrons surround the nucleus. A very crude model of atom can be approximated as our solar system. Just like planets have their own orbits and are located at different distances from the sun, electrons behave accordingly. This model is still popular in teaching physics as it is easier to visualize. This is shown in figure A. A more accurate model which we believe today is electron cloud model shown in figure B. This model claims that there is no such discrete elliptic orbits as the previous one. Instead, we see a disk-like structure around a nucleus with different shades of orange, which indicates the electron cloud. As it is in the form of cloud, particular locations of electron cannot be determined. We can only measure most probable location by identifying darker shades of orange as if they are the cells for electron with fuzzy boundary. This model is used in chemistry and quantum mechanics. Whatever model we consider, typically the number of electrons equals the number of protons as in the helium atom in the left side of the slide. The outermost electrons are located farthest from nucleus and are held more loosely than the inner ones. As we can see in the right side picture, 
sodium atom has 11 protons 12 neutrons within nucleus and 11 electrons around the nucleus first two electron are located in the first shell next eight electron in the second cell and the 11th electron that is the outermost one is situated in the outermost cell third cell so the 11th electron in the outermost cell can be easily vacant and the sodium will left with a positive charge in this way rubbing two materials electron may migrate from one material to another this migration will create an imbalance of charge which further causes static electricity the object whose atom lost electrons will be left with positive charges on it and the object which receives electron will possess negative charge and this idea totally coincides with franklin's idea and it is a coincidence following this migration of charge we can categorize the objects that hold their electrons very tightly are called insulators like diamond here and electrons within the insulators can only move within atoms themselves but cannot leave their atoms under normal circumstances on the other hand who have a weak attraction to their electron are called conductors that is copper wire now electrons are free to move inside the conductor itself or can migrate to another conductor and human body is also a example of good conductor so we cannot hold any metallic object to rub and create static electricity and so far we have used mostly insulators in our discussion now these insulators possess various tendency to acquire or lose electrons the ordering of these tendencies is referred as the triboelectric series tribo is a greek word which means rubbing so triboelectricity means electric charge generated by friction this series is also called electronegativity scale the top of the list measures the ability of the material to lose electron and gain positive charge within it while bottom of the list is a measure of the material to acquire negative charge you can see the series in this slide for example if we rub glass on silk glass will gain positive charge and silk will gain negative charge this solves the problem number three in slide seven there is also a rule more distance between two elements in this series more amount of charge will be transferred less distance creates less charge imbalance now another question you may think is the charge of one electron is smallest one isn't it possible to exist any charge less than electronic charge invention of particle accelerator have opened a door inside the nucleus they have shown that the nucleons are made of quarks which are again held together by gluons quarks are of six types up quark down quark top quark bottom quark strange and charm quark all of them have different property like charge mass spin etc so without confusing you too much let us know that elementary particles inside atom are quarks and electrons and electrons do not have any quark structure now most tiny charge is negative one third of electronic charge and possessed by down quark up quark has positive to two third charge of electron from the picture of proton you can see three valence quarks that is two up and one down quark in the proton which makes the charge of proton positive one and there is one up quark and two down quark makes the charge of the neutron as zero so you will obviously think then charge of the down quark must be considered as the fundamental one 
but the quarks are only found in combination and always combine to form particles with integer charge that is proton positive 1 neutron 0 etc and the charge of electron can exist freely and it is the main cause of static electricity and that's why electric charge is considered as elementary finally we begin with a substantiated discussion of the notion of charge empirically we know that the existence of charge is tied to matter charge is an extensive scalar quantity that is measured by fixing a certain reference charge that is 1 coulomb in SI unit and stat coulomb or ESU electrostatic unit in CGS charge of electron is 1.602 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb now the total charge transfer from any material to another one is measured as the integer multiple of one electric charge this is known as the quantization of charge another beautiful phenomena is no charge either positive or negative can be created alone if we create any kind of charge other kind will be created anywhere in this universe this is known as the conservation of charge now that is all for this video and we will come with many other interesting concepts for unanswered questions thank you for watching please like share and subscribe bye